Welcome seaweed fans. Today I'm talking to Stephen Hermans, the editor of the information portal on seaweed by economy.net. It's really awesome. Check it out. Um, hi Stephen, thank you so much for talking to me today. Hello, How are you? I'm all right, thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be chatting to someone who knows all about the seaweed market. Um, so today we're going to be talking about the seaweed market worldwide. Um, and specifically in, in Europe. Um, Stephen has been doing a ton of work and research and has a lot of information to share with us. So um, let's jump in. Um, before we get started about um, talking about Phyconomy, I'd love to hear how it was exactly that you started jumping into the seaweed rabbit hole. Uh, yeah, good question. It's I, I don't really even remember how I how, how I got into seaweed, but yeah, just uh, sort of just a blur. Over time, in like 2018, 2019, seaweed to me came more and more to the front of my imagination as like, yeah, this is something that uh, has like so many benefits. Uh, could uh, could be a solution for so many issues. A solution, not the solution, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, I, I was kind of busy doing other things, uh, but then when, when COVID hit, I was in the tourism industry and then tourism finished and then this kind of gave me the impetus to really uh, start working on, on something new when seaweed was just kind of right in the middle uh, of all the things that, that I thought were really kind of interesting to me on the one hand, like climate change, biodiversity loss, but also, um, yeah, something, uh, bigger like um, the ocean in general and we're, we're not paying enough attention to the mm -hmm. ocean um, which is I guess kind of normal since we're land animals but <laughs> we are that's true still an issue um, so uh, there's really yeah all these things together made me think like see it's right in the middle and it's this kind of yeah new uh, industry and I felt there's really like an information gap and since that's kind of what I do Mm -hmm. I, I collect, You're a journalist by trade, right? Yeah, so I, I collect information, I research it. I, I, I like to say maybe more of a librarian in the sense that, you know, I, I try to put everything together and make it easy for people to, um, yeah, to find this information, to find exactly what they need. Um, so, yeah, and I, I felt like seaweed really needs this. And there's, there's people doing great work, uh, scientists, uh, and people in business. Um, but uh, yeah, there's, there's this kind of disconnect between the two, and uh, for everyone sort of on the outside looking in, um, yeah, it's it's difficult to to really find out about seaweeds, and unless you really start to talk to um, these few people who really know everything, so I thought it, it should be easier for people to to learn more about seaweed. Absolutely. What is it about seaweed that? Um... Sort of, could you get into slightly more specifics about what it is about seaweed that excites you so much? Um, well, I, I guess at first, uh, like so many people, I, I was attracted to uh, the the carbon potential of, of sucking carbon uh, out of the air, out of the ocean, um, and then uh, the, the fact that it has so many applications uh, that uh, we could use to replace things that uh, we currently use petrol for, uh, like bioplastics. Um, also fertilizer had uh, these kind of things that we're, we're using too much of as mm -hmm. fertilizer. They're, they're being washed away into the rivers, into the ocean, creating these dead zones. Um, so seaweed can, can suck up these extra nutrients and we can just harvest that and, and put that onto our fields again. So and just the fact that uh, there's, there's no land needed, no fresh water, two things that we don't have uh, enough of basically. So, and it's, yeah, the, a lot of benefits. And then the fact that in uh, tropical countries, it's, it's mostly women doing the work. So uh, mm -hmm. that's a great sort of co-benefit that, uh, um, for instance, be before I started with seaweed, I was also really into microalgae, which has a lot of the same properties. It's also really uh, good for um, sucking uh, carbon out of the air, but it doesn't have this this extra benefit, so it doesn't mm -hmm. um, do these other things. So yeah, that's um, yeah makes me think seaweed's really kind of unique in that. I couldn't agree more. Um, so let's talk about the market in general. Um, you probably have more knowledge than most of the people I've spoken to because 
you have been looking specifically into every company you can find. Mm -hmm. um, kind of broadly speaking, could you summarize for us what you see the market is mostly for seaweed right now? Um, well, I, I guess it's kind of uh, very split. There's, uh, you know, this kind of burgeoning uh, fledgling market in, uh, in, in the West, in, in Europe, in uh, America, in Africa also. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's kind of really, um, yeah, completely separated from what's, what's been happening in, in the East, in, in Asia for uh, the past 50 years, where it's really mature. And um, yeah, that's, that's really two different worlds almost. Eh? Um, so in general, a, a lot of seaweed in, in Asia has been grown for um, either food uh, mm -hmm. or also a lot of hydrocolloids. Eh? So carrageenan, agave, all these things that uh, we use in yeah, thousands of products and uh, everything that's, that's kind of a little bit uh, modified in, in the supermarkets has often has one of these things in it. Um, Carrageenan is the um, the substance that gives things like a gelatinous exactly. thick feeling, right? That's it. So yeah, that's that's in everything from yeah, all kinds of cakes or uh, ice cream, a lot of cosmetics has, has it as mm -hmm. well. Um, agar is also, it's, it's used in um, laboratories for petri dishes, etc. It's in PCR tests, for instance. Uh, I was, I recently found out. So yeah, it's, it's in a oh, lot wow. that you, you're not really aware of. Um, so and that's that's kind of, let's say, the, the two main uses. And then um, a, lot, a lot is used for alginates as well. And so alginates mm -hmm. are also yeah, used for the same, like tons of uh, different kind of applications. Um, anything that needs a bit of a gelling um, or right. a bit of a different texture, you can, you can throw that in and, and they give it this, its, its properties. So yeah, that's kind of most of it, huh? and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and for us in in the West, that it's it's um, it's still very new seaweed, huh? so it's uh, it's a totally different way of um, um, harvesting and farming seaweed because we're yeah most of it in Asia is is farmed, it's aquaculture, mm -hmm. and, uh, whereas in the West it's okay, it's only it's less than one percent of the the total. Um, but it's um, it's wild harvested, not most of it. And uh, yeah, to get aquaculture going here, uh, we need uh, mechani mechanization because it's simply mm -hmm. uh, it's too expensive to uh, do things manually as it's done in uh, in most Asian countries. Um, we need to pay people more, uh, so we need less people doing this stuff. So we need um, yeah different technology, better technology. So um yeah that's that's sort of the, the two different worlds of, of seaweed right now how do you see that developing in in europe at the moment um well i think that's that's a good question it's it's there's definitely a lot of interest in both from um policy makers or ngos or uh, just mm -hmm. uh, bottom up a lot of people want to see this happening uh, but there are a lot of bottlenecks eh? so on the one hand there's some some basic science that needs to be done and like how mm -hmm. how can you grow these things that uh, we need different species then you can grow in asia um and from the perspective of biosecurity you know how do you make sure that it's that it's safe and that it doesn't damage uh, the ecology of of the sea so so that's one part and then you need this uh, these new rigs these uh, new harvesters etc to make it profitable to do this at scale um, I think there's also a bottleneck at the, the, the side of uh, societal license. Mm -hmm. People don't really know what aquaculture is. Uh, people aren't familiar with, with seaweed. Um, in, in general, people have kind of a, a negative opinion of aquaculture because of big salmon farms and, and what they've heard right. about this. So, um, yeah, there's definitely also a, a need to work on, on that uh, to uh, explain to people what this uh, seaweed farming is, eh? how it has a lot of benefits. Um, otherwise, yeah, de definitely people are gonna uh, complain. And uh, you know, if you just throw a big seaweed farm in front of the sea, in front of the coast, then uh, uh, yeah, if people just uh, they'll they'll just, they'll start reacting. Um, mm -hmm. and then just on the demand side, eh? we gotta 
make seaweed more palatable for uh, Western tastes. Uh, we're, we're not used to eating seaweed. Um, that we know of. The, exactly. So it's uh, it, it's a new flavor. Um, it doesn't <laughs> in in any kind of dishes that uh, people traditionally eat. So yeah, there's uh, there's definitely a lot of work to um, yeah to get people to to eat more seaweed to appreciate it and uh, to adapt it to Western palates and uh, for all the other uses that uh, seaweed has. Uh, yeah, the, all of these things are not developed yet. They, there's at least I think 20 companies making bioplastics uh, mm -hmm. out of seaweed right now, and, but they're all in the startup phase. Eh? So right. that's still really, it all has to happen still. So there's, there's still a lot of bottlenecks there before it can really get, get big or start to scale. What would you say the biggest bottleneck for the plastic companies currently is? Um, well, maybe the, the biggest one is uh, just getting the, the seaweed. So it's, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it's difficult for them to, uh, to get the, the amounts they need to start a biorefinery. If you start a biorefinery and to um, really get the most out of the seaweeds, you need thousands of tons to make that like a... Uh, at scale to, uh, to make it a profitable business and so mm -hmm. to, yeah to invest those millions you, you got to be sure that you get the supply all this supply and then also that you have this demand for all the plastics that you're going to make um so you're going to have offtake agreements with some some really big companies and, and those companies also have um demands uh, it needs to be safe it needs to um yeah they need to know that um, making plastic from seaweed isn't going to cost more energy than mm -hmm. making, uh, uh, let's say a cardboard uh, packaging etc so yeah in, in terms of processing that's another bottleneck that uh, just drying seaweed etc can also be quite uh, energy consuming depending mm -hmm. on how you do it and so um, yeah that's that's another thing that, that needs to be solved so I, I don't know how far each company is in in that journey um, I, I think uh, not PLA, they're, they're kind of the, at least the, the most recognized name uh, at yeah. the moment. Um, yeah, so, but uh, they're also not, you know, uh, um, selling millions. And so it's, uh, it's still a, a startup company. Yeah. Gotcha. So it sounds like there's lots of pieces missing of the puzzle. If you were a policymaker, um, where would you focus, or a policymaker, or perhaps an entrepreneur? Where would you focus your efforts? That's, uh, I didn't even talk about policymakers yet. That's, uh, that's another big issue. That <laughs> it's, uh, it's difficult to to start a seaweed farm. And so it's, it's mm -hmm. a little bit easier in the places where aquaculture in in the West is is a bit more common, and where they already have salmon farms, etc. Right. Um, and, but in, in other countries, it's uh, yeah, it's sometimes easier to start drilling for oil than to start a seaweed farm, just because you know there's there's no rules. They don't know it. Politicians and they're maybe not interested. Um, mm -hmm. so you gotta really lobby them, explain it to them, uh, tell them what the benefits are, etc. And then uh, yeah, hope hope that they are eager to listen. So. Um, yeah, just getting the license can take can take years, mm -hmm. so that, that should be made easier, uh, preferably uh, like in, in Europe or in US at the, at the national level uh, or at an international level in, in the EU, and it's, uh, yeah, it would just be much easier um, to, to start uh, farming, and um, yeah, that would be a good place to start, let's say. <laughs> okay, there's a lot, there is a lot there. Um... <laughs> Uh, let's sort of let's move on to the demand on to the um, supply side um, mm -hmm. and talk about um, you know, what's the supply like in in Europe right now and if the if do you, what you think if the supply was massively increased what do you think would happen do you think that would unlock everything or do you think that's not quite the biggest barrier um, so sorry, uh, you were, you broke up there for a moment. So you're saying if, oh, uh, what would happen if the supply in Europe would go up? Yeah. Well, what's the current supply and what do you think would happen if there was a, a large increase? Um, yeah, so I, I think at, at the moment, the, there's definitely room to um, to actually in, increase the supply. And as I was mm -hmm. uh, talking to someone today in, uh, and, and they, they said, like, we can produce more, 
if there is a demand, uh, the, and this was right. in, in, in Europe. So um, yeah, actually, it's a bit of a chicken and egg problem. And there's um, you can't really uh, grow more if uh, if the processing capacity isn't there, if uh, mm -hmm. demand isn't there, and uh, yeah, the other way around, so you can't really start any kind of big uh, new seaweed product if, if the supply isn't there. So yeah, they, they need to go go up together, and huh? so that's uh, yeah that's something that uh, requires a, a bit of a, a bold plan. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, or otherwise uh, the, the other option is to just do it gradually, and I think that's that's sort of what's what's happening now, and, and maybe that isn't the the worst case scenario to to gradually build it up, and uh, yeah, take it step by step. <laughs> Got yeah. So how much is how much is um, grown versus harvested in Europe at the moment? Uh, oh, I think it's yeah, ninety nine percent is is wild harvested. Something like wow. that could be off a couple of percent, but it, basically, yeah. As is, if if there's people uh, doing aquaculture, that's if it's more than a hundred tons, then it's already that that's already quite a big um, mm -hmm. farm. Then you're yeah, then you're definitely in the top. Um, whereas the wild harvesters, they're doing 10,000 tons um, uh, more, more in that kind of region. And so, oh wow, yeah, there's a big difference there. So, are most of the plastic companies and other companies that are working on seaweed products being supplied by wild harvesters? Y yes, I almost. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know. Seeing how they at the moment, they don't really need such such big amounts. Um, mm -hmm. It would be possible that. Uh, they can get it from from aquaculture, um, but but otherwise, yeah, definitely, yeah, anything that happens at a little bit of scale, um, and like for instance, the people um, selling fertilizer, etc. That's, mm -hmm. that's definitely happening uh, from wild harvest in, in Europe. Yeah, that's it. Got you. Okay, I'm not sure whether to ask about fertilizer or wild harvesting. Let's talk about wild harvesting first. Um, so. What do you think of wild harvesting of seaweed? Is do you, you um, I know we spoke about this, we touched on it in a previous conversation that we had. So I don't want to pin you down on something you haven't fully thrashed out yet, but sort of I don't know, just high level. Um, yeah. What are your thoughts and feelings on wild harvesting? There's different types of uh, wild harvesting, and so it is the wild harvesting where you just sort of cut off the the top of the the seaweed. So in in my opinion, from someone who hasn't really researched it, that, that seems really fine. And you're just mm -hmm. cutting off the top. So at the, the, the seaweeds are, are staying in the ground. Um, you're, ju you're just trimming them basically. Mm -hmm. um, with the other wild harvesting, um, I mean, I, I'd say that there's people hand picking it from, uh, from the shore. Um, if that's done sustainably, I, I also can't really see um, much, much wrong with it if you're not taking too much. Um, and then there's the, the dredging. That's that's another story, of course. That that, that must do some damage to um, the seabed. Um, there are people dredging for seaweed. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that's huh. uh, um, yeah. That, that does happen. Um, so I, I don't really know too much about it. I'll I'll say up front. So um, I, I know that, for instance, in in Norway, and uh, they're really quite strict about um how much you can harvest and it's really just like a, a very small percentage um per year so it's um it's not diminishing the amount of uh um of seaweed that's available um, mm -hmm. so it's it's staying uh, at a similar level and i don't know what the damage is to to the rest of the ecological system let's say um yeah that's uh, for the scientists who work out i haven't read these papers yet <laughs> All right, got you. So let's move on to fertilizer then. Who's using it for fertilizer and um, where are they getting their seaweed from? Um, where, so where are they getting seaweed? <laughs> Mostly from uh, wild harvesting, I imagine. Um, so, but uh, that doesn't have to be necessarily a bad thing. Um, mm -hmm. For instance, we have all these uh, huge um, sargassum uh, tides mm -hmm. uh, in Caribbean, Mexico, those places. Uh, but also it uh, goes all the way to, uh, to Africa. You have these like, thousands of kilometers long sargassum tide. Um, so that's, that's 
millions of tons of sargassum that's really uh, creating enormous problems for these people. So uh, you can also make fertilizer out of it. And there's people mm -hmm. doing that in, in Mexico. And there's a company called C Combinator. They're quite in, getting quite a bit of attention uh, right now. Um, and uh, they're also creating fertilizer out of uh, sargassum. So yeah, that's uh, I, I think it's 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 quite easy to make. Let's say um, mm -hmm. it's kind of the simplest thing to uh, to squeeze out of. Uh, uh, seaweed, so and it works. And there's lots of uh, science uh, surrounding this, and it's uh, a good. Maybe I should say biostimulant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they technically have to call it. <laughs> I don't really know what the difference is between a biostimulant and a fertilizer, but I, I usually see the term biostimulant uh, with regards to seaweed. So um, I should probably say that. So. Um, it, it, <laughs> I think it uh, might be that fertilizer is usually a solid or a powder and biostimulant is a liquid. Okay, I see. Okay, good. I I think. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so there's definitely, there's enough of it to go around so that they can just scoop that up and, and it's really <laughs> beneficial for uh, these coastal communities. Um, and, and there's a, a bunch of other seaweed species that yeah, have, have proven to be yeah, very good for, for fertilizer. So, um, yeah, I recommend it to anyone with a little garden. Just spray some, some seaweed biostimulant on it. it. It works. I have been trying some. I'm not very green in the uh -huh. thumb, but my plants seem to like it. So, yeah. <laughs> well, they're not dead yet anyway. <laughs> Which is, you know, what we're going for, I suppose. Um, yeah. Let's talk about technology development. Who, um, who in the space of... Um, you know, seaweed in, in anywhere really in the world um, is is working on the most interesting technologies that you've seen to um, um, grow yeah. good, good question. I think there's, uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening. So especially when it comes to biorefineries, so that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's definitely something where there's, there's a need for better technologies at the moment. If we talk about alginates, for instance, mm -hmm. um, and we just sort of squeeze out 20% alginates and the other 80% of the seaweed is just thrown away. Yeah, this is waste. It's kind of can't do anything. Oh, wow. with it. Um, so uh, I feel like you probably could do something with it, though. <laughs> yeah. So that's the idea of a biorefinery that you use a, a cascading process. Yeah? So you mm -hmm. take out first the the very uh, the most precious elements. Yeah? So that's like pharmaceuticals, uh, mm -hmm. ingredients for cosmetic. Uh, in stuff yeah, so uh, like Pucoid and etc. You, you can take out these out first, and they're worth a, a lot of money. And you go mm -hmm. then down to the next step, and the next step, and the next step, and then. And the idea is, if if you're growing at scale and uh, in, in maybe 30 years time, um, that uh, the last bit of biomass that you could start using it for for biofuel. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and there are people doing that at, uh, last, was it last week or two weeks ago, Algenor in uh, Norway, they, they got another 20 million uh, dollars injection for their biorefinery concept. And, and so they're kind of the first um, to, to really start a seaweed biorefinery that's going to use 100% of, uh, of the biomass. And, and there, to do this, um, what's important is that uh, they don't use formaldehyde, and so that's mm -hmm. another bad thing about current seaweed processing. It's uh, to stabilize it to get the alginates out. You need this formaldehyde, and, and that's basically the reason why you have to throw away everything else because it's now contaminated with uh, oh, wow. formaldehyde. You, you can't eat it anymore. You can't sell it to people for food, etc. Um, so uh, that's uh, for, for this like new uh, improved uh, technologies are needed. Um, but there's other people doing other cool things as well. Uh, um, in in Mexico, it's uh, it's kind of a Mexican Norwegian um, uh, joint venture, and they're um, building an underwater drone to uh, scoop up the sargassum um, before it lands on on the beaches. Um, it's a company. Cool. Called yeah, I think uh, that's that's great, uh, great idea, um, great company, and uh, and then they're also building these micro biorefineries on all the Caribbean mm -hmm. islands because they're, they're tiny islands. They can't really 
sustain uh, a huge bio refinery, so they're building right. new ones. Um, yeah, so I, I think there are lots of cool things happening. And so part of what I'm trying to do is to bring a bit more attention to uh, yeah, these very interesting people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think it's I think it's working. <laughs> I, I'm meeting more and more people in there interested in the seaweed space all the time. Um, all right, cool. Um, I think if I have any more questions in general, what's your what's your favorite product you've seen being made from seaweed so far? Uh, what's my favorite product? Oh, good question. Well, I, I, I would have to say um, maybe, uh, you, you know, this uh, seaweed crackers, tau, tau kai noi? It's uh, they're from I Thailand. Don't. No, no, you don't. Well, go to your local uh, Asian supermarket. Um, I'm sure they have it. And uh, yeah, they're delicious. And Thailand doesn't make any, um, doesn't really grow any seaweed. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, the this guy came along, he, he was unemployed, I think, and he started creating some, some seaweed uh, chips and uh, yeah, then he became a multi, multi-millionaire. Um, <laughs> well, that's the dream. <laughs> very popular product. And yeah, it's just, they're just very nice. Yeah, I, I, I also really <laughs> like them. Yeah. I'll go and see if I can find some. Can you say the name for me again? <sighs> it's difficult. <laughs> so it's, I <it's> know. <laughs> Tao Kai Noi. Okay, awesome. I will, I'll go and check those out. Um, amazing. Thank you so much. It was wonderful to chat to you and, um, well, try and download all of your seaweed knowledge into one chat. I'm sure I failed miserably, but <laughs> maybe we'll do this again in six months and get an updated version. Exactly. I'm, I'm also just, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm learning. It's uh, every day I'm, I'm learning new things. It's, uh, yeah, there's so much, um, yeah, to, to learn so, so many interesting things happening. And uh, yeah, seaweed has so many applications. I'm, I'm sure I forgot half of them. So yeah, I, I also need to just sort of get everything, try, try to get everything into two minutes, but it just doesn't work, you know? I keep forgetting. <laughs> that, uh, so far it's impossible, but one day we will get there. Um, thank you very much for talking to me. Um, if anyone wants to take a look at um, Stephen's information portal on seaweed, um, the website is phyconomy.net. Um, and if anyone wants to check out the website for this chat that may you may be listening to or watching or reading, um, the website is seaweedgeneration.com. Um, thank you very much, Stephen. Wonderful to chat to you. You're welcome. See you next time. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.